Shabbos daf peizayin. According to Rabbi Yossi, Rosh Chodesh was on a Sunday. Hakadosh Baruch Hu commanded Klal Yisrael to separate from the wives on Wednesday, and Matan Torah happened on Shabbos. The issue is that the pasuk says Vikidash dem hayoyimu machar. Only two days separation. If so, Wednesday and Thursday, Matan Torah should have been on Friday, not on Shabbos. The same issue is with the pasuk v'hayuna chaydim layoyim ashlishi. On the third day, they were good to go for Matan Torah. Rabbi Yosi must explain that Moshe Rabbeinu added an additional day on his own. He said, tomorrow, when Kach Baruch Hu says, tomorrow, he meant a full day, 24 hours. So therefore, if it's two days, it's two times 24 hours, I have to add another day, and Kach Baruch Hu agreed with him, because in fact, Kach Baruch Hu gave the Torah on Shabbos. This is one of the three things that Moshe Rabbeinu did on his own, and Kach Baruch Hu agreed with him. Kach Baruch Hu agreed with Moshe Rabbeinu, when Moshe Rabbeinu separated from his wife, Tzipayra, Moshe Rabbeinu made a kavachaymer. If Klai Yisrael have a date with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they know exactly when they're going to receive the Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said they have to separate from their wives three days earlier. So I, Moshe Rabbeinu, who HaKadosh Baruch Hu speaks to me all the time, and I don't know exactly when he'll speak to me, I certainly should separate from my wife, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed with him. You see, Vata Pa Amoidi Madi, or Pel Pe Adaber Boy, Kosh Baruch said, I commanded Moshe Rabbeinu to do so. If Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have came up with this own idea by himself, Kosh Baruch was mitzavah himself. And Kosh Baruch agreed with Moshe Rabbeinu when Moshe Rabbeinu broke the luchais. Moshe Rabbeinu made a cheshben. If the Korban Pesach cannot be done by a mumar, somebody that's off the derech, certainly Klai Yisrael, who are mumar, and they did the egel, they shouldn't receive the Torah. And he broke the luchais, and Kosh Baruch agreed, like it says, Asher Shibarto. Yasher I agree with the fact that you broke the Luchos. It says in the Brayso that on the Shlishi, the third day, and the Gemara explains, it's the third day from when Moshe Rabbeinu started talking to Klai Yisrael about Matan Torah, about the Sechar and Oynash. It was the third day of the month and the third day of the week. According to Chachamim, that Rish Chodesh occurred on Monday, so it happened actually, the third day that we're talking about was on Wednesday. So we must say this goes according to Rabbi Yaisi. But Yashiv Moshe's Dibri Alam al Hashem, there's two psukim. One says, Moshe returned to Akash Baruch what Klai Yisrael said. Then it says, Vayagid Moshe's Dibri Alam al Hashem. The number of Pshatim here. Rabbi Yaisi Rayudah says that on the third day, Akash Baruch commanded Klai Yisrael on Akbala, don't touch the mountain. Rabbi says, that first Moshe Rabbeinu told Klai Yisrael about the Oynesh. Shibuv. Vayashev is Lashem Shibuv. Shoivavim. Distance. Keep away. And afterwards, Moshe Rabbeinu told him about the Sakhar, about the award. Like Vayagate is Lashem of Agada. Things that pull people in. When you teach them Agada, people come close. And some say the opposite. First Moshe Rabbeinu taught him about the Sakhar, about the award. By Yoshev is Loshan of Mashivim. And then afterwards he taught them about the Oynesh, about a punishment. By Yagid is Loshan of Gidin, says Rashi, like bitter vegetables. The price says Shishi, on the sixth day. Sixth day of what? Machloikas, according to Rabbi it means the sixth day of the month and the sixth day in the week, on Friday. According to Rava, it's the sixth day from when they rested. And according to Rav Achar Bayakov, the same day that they rested is the day that they left. And there's a fundamental machlaikas here. Klai Yisrael received Shabbos. The halachas of Shabbos before Matan Torah. The question is, what did they receive? Did they receive all the halachas, including Tchumim? Tchumim explains it means Haitzah, going, and they wouldn't be able to travel. And therefore, when they traveled on Sunday, it means they traveled and they rested in the same day. Or perhaps they received Hilcha Shabbos, but they didn't receive the Isra of Haitzah and Tchumim. Therefore, it's possible that they traveled on Shabbos. They still didn't have that Isser. It says in the Braiso that that first Nisan, the Klai Yisrael, left Mitzrayim. First, they shechted the Karim Pesach. That night was Makas Bechayrois. And the following day, on the 15th of Nisan, they left Mitzrayim. Now, we know that whatever day of the week, the 15th of the month, falls out, that means Rosh Chodesh was that same day. 
The Brisa says that that was a Thursday. They left on Thursday. That means Rosh Chodesh was on a Thursday. If Rosh Chodesh is on a Thursday, then the following Rosh Chodesh is always either one day after that Thursday or two days after the Thursday, depending if it's a full month or a missing month. So if it's a 29-day month, then it's one day later. Nisan is always a full month. That means that if Rosh Chodesh was on a Thursday, the following month Rosh Chodesh was two days later on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, and if Rosh Chodesh Iyar was on a Shabbos, so the following month Rosh Chodesh Sivan was on a Sunday because Iyar is a Chaser and it's one day later. Shabbos means the following Rosh Chodesh is on a Sunday. Now according to Rabbanon, that Rosh Chodesh fell out on a Monday, we have to say that they made us another Ibar Chodesh that year on Iyar, and therefore Rosh Chodesh came out on a Sunday, and Rosh Chodesh Sivan on a Monday. The Torah says, The second year, the first of the month, who came on Mishkan? That's when the Mishkan was permanent. So not only did they put the Mishkan up, but there's 10 things that happened. Number one, it happened on a Sunday, the day that the world was created. Second of all, that's the day that the Nisim brought the Karbanais. Third of all, that's when the Kohanim started doing Aveda. Fourth of all, that's when they started bringing Karbanais of the Tzibor, like Atamid. That's when fire came down from Shemayim, that's the fifth thing. Sixth thing was, they started eating Kachim within an enclosed area of Mechitza. The seventh thing is, the Shechina was Shari in the Migdash. The eighth thing, they started doing Birkus Kohanim. Ninth thing is, there was the Isra Bamais. And tenth, that was the first of the Chadashim. There is a rule that if Yantav falls out on a certain day this year, we know that last year Yantav, the same Yantav fell out four days earlier, and if there's a leap year, five days earlier. So if the Torah tells us specifically that Rish Chodesh Nisan in the second year fell out on a Sunday, then we know that the year before it fell out on a Wednesday. And if Rish Chodesh Nisan fell out on a Wednesday, the following month, Iyar, always falls out two days later in the week, because Nisan is a Malay, so it fell out on Erev Shabbos. And if that's so, the following month, Sivan, falls out one day later in the week, because Iyar is a Chaser, so Sivan fell out on Shabbos itself. That does not fit in, not with Rabbi Yossi, not Chachamim. Both Rabbi Yossi and Chachamim have to answer similar answers. Rabbi Yossi is going to say that year happened to have seven missing months, and Chachamim are going to say that there was eight missing months, and that fills in the gap. Have a wonderful day.